I was just about to make some uh, tuna casserole. Tuna casseroles are cool because they're cheap to make and that's kind of what I've been living on lately. You can say, I know how to make tuna casserole, and then people are like, wow, that sounds impressive. That's a, that's a thing you can do, which I do not know how to do, therefore I'm impressed. <laughs> yes, you should be, because I'm special. I have a unique, beautiful point of light in the sky, and <laughs> there's a point to my existence. I think I went a little bit too deep on that one. Now I'm going to show you what the ingredients are. Spaghetti, because it's a casserole, and it has to be a, a spaghetti casserole. Spaghetti. Okay, you get that. We have two cans of tuna mayonnaise. It's better to get a smaller jar of mayonnaise because the smaller ones aren't as good as fending for themselves and they're easier to catch. Cream cheese. I got the chive and onion cream cheese because I said to myself, what the hell, it can't hurt. Basil. Basil, very important. If you can use fresh basil, use fresh basil. If you cannot use fresh basil, use what I got. Cloves of garlic. Because you never know if you need to find out if your house guest is a vampire. Also, garlic powder. You can never be too sure. Salt. I use David's kosher salt because, you know, you really want to kill those vampires. Tomatoes. Because they're pretty. They're pretty in red and it'll add color. Okay. Well, first... I open the cans of tuna because you need to open the... Okay. Remember, if you're using electrical equipment, you should plug it in. Oh, God. I'm okay. Give the tuna juice to your dog. This is actually part of the recipe. You have to do this. Otherwise, it won't come out as good. Add the tuna to a bowl because adding it to anything else would be weird. Remember to wash your hands before you do any of this because you're not a filthy animal. Make sure there are no sharp edges to the can, and then give those also to the dog. Nom 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 nom. It's kind of like hockey, only with your tongue. I like to squeeze the remaining tuna juice into the sink. Because saying tuna juice sounds disgusting. And now I like to peel and chop off the garlic. Take the garlic, crush it, and then it becomes easy to peel. Why I'm speaking like this, I do not know. Cut the garlic. now. Remember, it's hard to drive when your fingers are bleeding. So, it's better to start slowly and to be very cautious. That is a lot of garlic. Maybe that was a bit too much. I don't care. I like to add about three to four cherry tomatoes. If I can figure out how to open this damn thing, what the hell? <laughs> you are no match for my stupid strength. Wash the tomatoes. Oh, that went everywhere. I will clean that up. Oh, it's splashing all over the place. I guess you could also use this as a tutorial how to make ketchup. If your gigantic knife is splattering tomato everywhere, it's better to use a serrated knife. Tiny, but it's not the size that matters, it's how you use it. At least that's what I'd like to believe. I'm so not putting that part in the vlog. Add it to the mix. Now, two teaspoons of salt. That's one, that's two, and let's face it, we want a lot more salt than that. A tablespoon of basil. And a little bit more because we're going big. A little bit more garlic powder because vampires. And finally, after you break its little neck, you add the mayonnaise. About two tablespoonfuls. And you mix the large amount out of it. And when nobody's looking, you taste some of it. That's actually pretty good. This kind of looks like I'm casting a spell. Vingardium Levituna. God, that's terrible. You're gonna need a large pot. Fill it with water. I like to put my pot of water over a fire, preferably a gas stove or an electric one. If you do not have a gas or electric stove, you, uh, you need to find another source of heat. I would not recommend yellow cake uranium because it may irradiate your water and give you cancer. And if you're even near enough to the yellow cake uranium, you're probably gonna die anyway. So you, I guess you might as well enjoy your pasta. Huh. You know, I really can't tell what your situation is, so I'm just gonna assume, just 
boil your water any way you want because, you know, that's life. Wait for your water to come to a boil. Pass the time in any way you see fit. People still use the word fail? They say a watched pot never boils, but I've got a camera on you, mother And that looks like it's boiling. Are you boiling? Sort of, not yet. Well, you, camera, keep watch. This is stupid. Add pasta to boiling water. Why am I talking like I'm on Prozac? I don't know. Boil. <laughs> Oh, that was, that's a lot of pasta. Hmm, maybe a little bit too much pasta. No such thing as too much pasta. Yes, there is. A giant wooden spoon is a necessity for any kitchen, and I finally found a use for it. Get the pasta in there. Let it boil. Mix the pasta every so now and then so that it doesn't stick together. Actually, you got to mix the pasta, sing the mixing pasta song, mix it in figure eight circles, doesn't really matter as long as you mix it. La la, la 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 pasta, la 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 pasta, pasta is delicious. Give some to your dog. Have some pasta. Nom, nom, nom. Recently I discovered that it doesn't actually matter if you mix the pasta or not while it's boiling. I think it was just something my dad made me do so that I wouldn't get in the way. Thank you, dad. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, this part is super important, so pay attention. When your pasta is ready, first, to make sure it's ready, you throw it against the wall. Apparently that's not ready, but... Yeah, it is. Whatever. You take a, your bowl of pasta and you put it and you pour it into the strainer. Make sure there's an actual strainer there because otherwise you would have just poured your pasta down the sink, which is bad. And then you pour it into the... Oh god, ow, oh, burning, ow, oh, okay. Then you pour it into the tuna part. Yes, good. Then, while it's still hot, this is very important, you add cream cheese. Blah. And more cream cheese. All of the cream cheese. Then you mix it all together in a big, happy mix-like thing. This is definitely too much pasta, but we'll manage because we're a team, you and me, strange internet people. You just sort of mix it. And that is how you make Joey-style tuna casserole. And that was cooking with me today. So, I'm... I guess I'll I guess I'll see you guys all on my next adventure.